One of my absolute favorite kinds of LEGO sets has got to be the Battle Pack. It's a great way to get a little build and a couple of minifigures at a decent price. The only problem is, LEGO hasn't made a medieval one in a really, really long time. So today, I'm going to be making my own. We've got over four different Battle Packs to make in this video, so let's get right into it. Starting off first with the Red Falcons. You're probably already familiar with the Black Falcons that came in a lot of the modern LEGO Castle sets, but these guys right here, the Red Falcons, Falcons came out in 2022 from the build a minifigure stations inside of Lego stores. The torso print has chainmail on the front and a red falcon sigil on the back. They are probably one of my favorite, like, non-official Lego castle factions, so today we're going to be making them the set that they always deserved. Starting up first with the figs, we've got this heavily armored knight with a lot of red accessories and a sweet pair of legs that are actually custom printed by K-Town Bricks. I really love how this combination of parts looks, and I think we'll be using the same style or aesthetic for another minifigure later in the video. Anyways, next we've got a couple of spearmen. These guys are your basic army builders of the pack, kind of like the plain clone troopers from a Star Wars battle pack. I think you get the idea. I've used these legs from the Vampire Knight CMF because I think they work really well with these torsos. And our last minifigure of the pack is a crossbowman. I thought it'd be cool to use this torso because the cross is somewhat similar to the ones on the spearman's legs. And of course, the color scheme's the same. I love how these minifigs turned out, but now it's time for the build. My idea for this pack is to make a small fortified tower with a little overhang on the side. So to begin, we'll use three simple walls made from masonry bricks, snot bricks, and those little ingot pieces. This combo of parts is really just my bread and butter when it comes to making castles, and if you're wanting to get into medieval mock building, I would highly recommend you get these parts. I've also made some small arrow slits in each wall that will add in a little bit of extra texture into the wall, but also some functionality. Once we finish making the walls, we can then place the top of the tower onto them. I've made a little wooden floor on the inside to break up the plain gray of the rest of the build, and I think it turned out looking really nice. Now once the walls are in place, we can add in these four wooden beams to each corner, and then we can add in this sloped wooden overhang that I made by alternating dark and regular brown tiles. Again, I'm just trying to break up the gray of the rest of the tower, and I think this brown overhang really helps in doing that. And after that's locked into place, all we have to do is add in a door to the tower. This door comes from the medieval town square, and it just really has a nice texture to it compared to a lot of the older doors out there. And finally, for some last second additions to the build, I'll place down a barrel of arrows for our crossbowmen, and a flowing red and white flag as well. And now it's done. I am honestly super proud of how this tower looks. I was trying to redo a tower that I made a couple of months ago, and I think this one just looks leagues better. That wooden overhang and the top of the tower just looks a lot cleaner in this one in my opinion, but please let me know what you think in the comments. Anyways, now it's time to make a pack for the Violet Snakes. This is a new custom mercenary faction that I've made for my medieval world, so starting up first, we've got the leader. I've basically just taken the tax collector minifigure from the medieval town square and given him a sword. There's really not much to say about this guy, but I think he just works well as the leader of a mercenary company. Next, we've got my two favorite figs of the pack. These guys are spearmen that use some really, really cool looking tattoo torsos from Ninjago. And what I really love about these torsos is just how well they work with the barbarian legs. These guys are again, the kind of army builders of the pack, and they're what I'd imagine the bulk of the Violet Snake army looks like. I will almost definitely be buying more of these snake torsos and heads in the future because I just love how these guys turned out. Finally, our last minifigure is the Crossbowman, who uses the Bard CMF as the base. I love the purple and blue color scheme of this guy, and the dark brown hood matches him perfectly. He also comes with this fantastic sword sling piece that I believe comes from the old Pirates of the Caribbean sets. They should really bring back this piece though, it looks really cool, and it's sadly pretty rare nowadays. Same thing goes for those medieval hoods as well. I wish they were still being made today. But now that the figs are done, it's time to build the set. My idea for this pack is to make a small kind of camp outside of a ruined castle. I really love the idea that these guys are kind of hiding out beneath some old ruin and using it as their base. Granted, it's not a super unique idea, but I think it's just a really fun one to do. So first we'll build a little campfire and a place to cook their food. And we'll do that by making a small base plate that we can add some stones and dirt pieces to. Then we can place down a custom campfire that I've made by modifying one that came in an old Lord of the Rings set. 
I've remade that design by changing the colors of it and adding a lot more of the translucent fire pieces to it. So we'll place that campfire in the middle of the plate that we can then add in a rack with a couple of hanging fish. Finally, finishing it off with a cauldron of water and a small frying pan on the side. I really love how this campfire turned out, and it's such a simple build that probably anybody can make with their parts collection. Okay, so now that our campfire is done, I think it would make sense if we add in this little crate of cooked meat to go with it. Now for our other piece of the camp, let's make a storage area with some barrels of weapons, bottles, and a small suggestion of the ruined castle above them. Now, this pack is obviously a bit smaller than the tower, but I think this one is more fairly scaled to what LEGO would actually make. Especially if they're going for that $20 medieval battle pack price. I don't know. Either way, I love how this one turned out, and if it was real, I think you could imagine combining a couple of them to make a larger camp with a larger ruin behind them. Okay, next up, let's make a battle pack for another custom faction that I made called the Crowned Dragons. I came up with the idea of combining these Crown Knight torsos with the Black Knight shield from the 80s, and I actually think it looks surprisingly nice together. You'll notice that I've made the same armored knight design from the Red Falcon pack, but I've changed all the parts to match this new faction. I'm looking at this pack as somewhat of a mirror to the Red Falcon one. Similar to how LEGO sometimes will release two Star Wars battle packs that go against each other, I think you know what I mean. To go with the knight, I've made two spearmen that again are mirroring the ones from the Red Falcon pack. And finally, we've got a crossbowman to go against the Falcon one. I adore how these two factions look next to each other, and it makes me want LEGO to do a couple of medieval battle packs even more now. Anyways, now for the build. I want to make them a supply wagon. We'll start off with a base for the wagon. I've just placed down a bunch of brown tiles and studs in the back, and then tan ones in the front where the drivers can sit. To this base, we can then add in the sides of the wagon. I did this mostly with some basic snot connections, nothing that complicated, but I think it looks really solid. And then in the front, we'll place down a sloped backrest that was made with some dark tan pieces, and we'll also add in the wheels to the wagon and the horse. Once all of that's done, we can then simply just add in all of the cargo. I've got a couple of these really nice printed barrels from the Viking Village, some crates of weapons, and a treasure chest with loot inside. Along with all of that, we'll throw in some spears, flags, and a bag of coins. And it's done! This is easily my favorite horse-drawn wagon that I've made, and it was probably the easiest one to make, funnily enough. Sometimes keeping things simple is really just the way to go, especially with LEGO. Having this pack and the Red Falcon pack next to each other just feels so right to me, and I think it really shows the proof of concept for what LEGO could do with medieval battle packs in the future. So to finish out this video, let's make our final battle pack. For this one, I went in a slightly different direction, but let me explain. Something that all castle fans will agree with is that we just don't have enough peasant minifigures. So why not make a peasant battle pack? I've made a miner with a pickaxe and gold, a farmer with a carrot and pitchfork, a merchant with gold coins, and a blacksmith with a hammer. And to go with all of these figs, I've made a couple of profession-based builds. So we've got a small shop for the merchant, and I've built it in the same style as the ones from the Lion Knight's Castle and the Medieval Town Square. I've just done a really simple color swap, and I've added in some pottery and gemstones that the miner has sold to the merchant. Then for the blacksmith, I've made a custom oven with smoke billowing out of the top, and then an anvil with a barrel of water for quenching all of the blades. Then finally, the last little build is a small bed of pumpkins and carrots for the farmer to tend to. This pack to me feels pretty realistic to what LEGO would actually do with a peasant battle pack, down from the size of the builds to the swappability of the minifigure heads. It just feels pretty realistic to me, I don't know. Obviously I don't think as many people would buy multiples of this set, but I think it still works as a battle pack. And that's all four of them. I love making these custom medieval battle packs a ton, and I especially love making them for my custom factions. The Red Falcons deserve to get some more attention on this channel, so I might make them a larger mock sometime in the near future. Please let me know what you thought about the builds in the comments below, and as always, thank you so much for watching.